All right. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. We only have 12 participants so far. So perhaps everybody who is interested came on Friday and uh, or most people. And we'll just have a, a few additional people today for the introduction. But let's wait a minute or two, see where we get. So Franz, uh, I don't know, since we advertise that your training is going to start on the hour, I'm not sure we should uh, segue into it early because people may feel that they're going to miss it if they just join on the hour. Yeah, it's fine to start at 10. Um, there should have been, uh, for the folks that are on, did you see an invite for the um, Open SAR Lab introduction that starts in an hour from now? You should have seen an invite from Melissa. I'm not sure if anybody can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. From, from Melissa or from Rebecca? I think it was from Rebecca, with signed by you, right? That was last Friday? Yes. It may be that Rebecca sent it out. So there's a separate calendar invite and a separate Zoom link um, for um, today at 11 Pacific Daylight Time. Um, you should have seen that for, for a training on the Open SAR Lab. So that we should keep at 11 because that's how I was invited. Yes, so I see the, an email to everyone on uh, Friday at 4.54 p.m. California time. There's no ICS file attached to it, but the Zoom link is in there. Yeah, maybe I post it on um, Slack also to make sure. Sure. And uh, just for your information, I think I need to attend other meetings that hour. I think I know how to run an open SAR lab and I don't think I will be needed for helping out with the training. So I'll probably drop off. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And so Alex is gonna join uh, Alex Landowski from ASF. Okay, great. Okay, I see Fazan there, is there. Hi Fazan. You're not, uh, you're still muted. I don't know if uh, we're allowed to unmute ourselves. I, certainly I could. All right, it's 10.02. I see Lee ends there also. And uh, Okay, so uh, how many people uh, do you know how to raise your hand on this thing? There's a reactions button at the bottom of Zoom and you can either raise your hand or thumbs. Yeah, that's full uh, on the call right now attended a Friday as well. So one, two, three, four, four, okay. <laughs> Okay, the, the thumbs up are kind of popping up and down. So I, I'd say about half of the people attended on Friday. So the other half are new. So uh, let's get started then. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, this kickoff meeting for the uh, INSAR ICE Mint Pie ARIA Tools Open SAR Lab training that we're giving this week. Sorry about the dog. Um, so I'd like to just to go around and introduce the instructors and the TAs that are present. I don't think we all have everybody here. More people were here on Friday. Um, and just go over sort of the structure of the course, including the syllabus, which you can find, uh, review the resources that we have available to you. Uh, and then we'll talk about the assessment uh, aspect of the class as well. I'm not sure I see Hillary here but we can do that for you, for her. 
Uh, and then maybe today we can end early and have the uh, open SAR lab training section just uh, at, uh, at the next hour instead of having a, a short summary included in this hour. Okay, so let's see, let me bring up the syllabus first. You should all have had access to the syllabus. Um, let me mute myself. For Okay, sorry, I'm, now I'm going to try to bring up the syllabus. Uh, in the meantime, let's, uh, while I'm bringing that up, why don't we introduce ourselves? So I'm Paul Rosen. I am sort of the overall coordinator of this uh, training. I work at JPL. I've worked in INSAR for the last uh, many, many years. I've been at JPL since 1992 and started doing INSAR pretty much as soon as I got here. And, um, much of the work that's been done to put this course together and a lot of the workflows that you're going to be taught have been done by other people. I'll be talking about the theory and helping out as much as possible in this class. But uh, the other instructors have by far taken the INSAR uh, ball and run with it and put together a very compelling set of tools that you're going to be trained on. So with that, I'll turn it over to Gareth Funning. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Gareth Funning. I'm a professor at the University of California, Riverside. I am a geophysicist who uses inside to study earthquakes and tectonics mostly. Uh, and my responsibility in the class being mostly to teach those things. Um, I processed my first interferogram in the year 2000. Uh, so I seemingly am now a veteran. It kind of snuck up on me a little. Um, and uh, I'm looking very, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to teaching this class. I think it's a lot of fun, uh, and I hope uh, we have a lot more positive interactions in, in the weeks to come. Great, thanks, Gareth. How about you, Franz? Hey, you all, Franz Meyer from the University of Alaska Fairbanks, where it is <clears throat> quite rainy today, yeah. and uh, we actually have the beginning of fall already here in, in Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, um, I work here as a faculty for, for remote sensing at the University of Alaska. I also am the uh, chief scientist of the Alaska Satellite Facility, which is NASA's data center for SAR data. So uh, we, for instance, currently house um, all of the Sentinel-1 archive, uh, a complete mirror of the Sentinel-1 archive that you get from uh, the European Space Agency. And we will also be the host of the uh, NISAR data sets uh, once NISAR is being launched uh, sometime in spring of 2023. Um, I've been also working on INSAR since uh, the year 2000. Uh, hello, Gareth. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, I focus mostly on uh, either methods development in atmospheric ionospheric correction or the use for INSAR data for hazard monitoring. And I hope you all will have fun in this class. Okay, great. Let's see. Uh, before I forget, Becca, can can, can somebody uh, post the uh, link in the chat? I don't see the pins in Slack anymore that I thought we had. But, so uh, let's Garrett see. posted the uh, syllabus link. Thank you. <laughs> the older I get, the less. Uh, I feel I know what I'm doing with the, these tools. Okay, great. Now I have it up. Thank you very much. All right, so let's see who else is on. Do we have Haresh on? I don't think we do. So Haresh Fatahi works at JPL. He's uh, responsible for algorithm development for the NISAR project. NISAR is a new SAR satellite that NASA is building along with India. Uh, he's, he's responsible for the algorithm development and has worked on uh, many of the workflows that uh, you'll be seeing here. Uh, Brent Minchu is another instructor. Uh, he is a prof professor of geophysics uh, specializing in glaciology, I believe for now at MIT. And he's going to be training on a couple of new modules this year on uh, interpreting uh, glacier uh, dynamics uh, and interferograms from uh, ice sheets and glaciers. Uh, Yunjun Zhang is he on? 
we had a big keys on, he was on Friday. So Yunjin uh, is uh, one of the prime developer, developers of the current version of Mint Pi. Uh, I think the original version was developed by uh, Haresh when he was in Florida and Yunjin continued that development is now a postdoc at Caltech uh, working on that. David Beckert is a uh, JPL employee now. He is the lead chief scientist for a project called Opera, which is to develop value-added global products from Sentinel, uh, Landsat, Sentinel-2, uh, and NISAR when it eventually launches, and has worked extensively in tropospheric modeling and tropospheric uh, noise estimation and interferometry. And uh, the last instructor who, who is also, he's sick today, is Scott Hensley. He is a, a colleague of mine, worked on INSAR basically since 1992 together, developing a lot of the original tools upon which these workflows in this class are based. So that's the list of instructors. Um, now we'll move to the TAs. We have uh, four TAs for this class who are amongst the students and they just volunteered to help. I think two, if I'm not mistaken, are on today. So uh, maybe we'll start with Lu Yen. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Um, thank you, Paul. Um, I have had so many chances to practice introducing myself this time. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Lu Yen Bui. Uh, it is now I'm doing um, my post. Uh, I'm working as a postdoc associate at the University of Houston in LIDA. And I had my PhD thesis. I did my PhD thesis in INSA before um, with um, time series analysis. And I have experience in inside data processing with giant um, eyes, giants, and stamps before. And the reason why I joined this uh, course is that I want to update my knowledge and my experience in inside data processing with um, new eyes version two, I think and uh, mean pie, as Paul mentioned. And um, with my experience and working um, now, I am um, uh, resistant to be a TA and hope can uh, contribute something for me to the course. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Leanne. And I think I see Faizan, can you get your uh, audio to work, Faizan? Oh, uh, yes. Is that okay? Could you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. So, uh, I am Fezan. As you all know, I'm from Pakistan. Uh, by profession, I'm a geologist and I am working in the field from past 10 years. Uh, since I graduated in 2010 from uh, University of Punjab here in Pakistan. And uh, I started working on synthetic aperture radar in 2015. And then uh, rigorously, I started working on SAR uh, in 2017, where I studied the fault lines of Pakistan. Specifically, uh, we studied the strike slip faults of Pakistan uh, near the mega structures like dams and uh, big uh, populated areas. And uh, I intend to continue this study with Geological Survey of Pakistan because I was employed there uh, for five years with them. And uh, I intend to uh, you know, continue further study using INSAR uh, here in Pakistan, in, in geohazards. That's all from my side for now. Thank very you very much. Thank you. Uh, the other two uh, TAs I don't see online right now. Um, both are from India, Shubham Awashti and uh, Pratyusha Konuru. And I'm sure those names, pronunciations were just approximate. Uh, anyway, we thank all the TAs who volunteered their time. They're gonna help with uh, answering questions and looking at the homeworks and making sure things are on track. And last but not least for introductions, I'd like to introduce uh, Becca Vassard, who is uh, sort of the overall a logistics coordinator. Uh, she's a summer intern at, uh, at UNAVCO and has been absolutely instrumental in getting things together. So Becca, you want to say a few words? 
Hi, uh, my name is Becca. I am a third year PhD candidate at University of Oregon, and I use a lot of inside time series analysis to look at different volcanic systems. So like Paul said, I've just kind of been doing logistics and a bunch of other tasks. So you'll see me around doing various things throughout the course. So nice to meet you all. Hey, thanks very much. And you'll see emails from uh, Melissa Weber from UNAVCO every now and then. Uh, she's been helpful, very helpful in organizing the class as well. All right, so let's get going here. Um, as Gareth said, this is a fun class for everybody uh, because we get to play with quite a bit of power by just connecting up to a cloud machine someplace in the world and processing a lot of data. Uh, and you learn the tools and techniques. And uh, I think uh, I'll speak for the other instructors. We're kind of pleased with this Jupyter Notebook format that we have, which allows you to do actual computations while you're also um, learning and reading about uh, the steps step by step. And you can almost uh, sort of teach yourself using these tech using these notebooks. So we hope you find it as uh, fun and enlightening as uh, we do. Just as an anecdote, um, we've been teaching this class in this format for a few years now. And sometimes uh, since I'm working at the same time, I get a little distracted and I don't pay attention. I have not always paid attention at the same level that you should be paying attention. And, uh, but I wanted to use one of the techniques in time series analysis that um, had been instructed. So I, um, I, after the fact, so after the fact, I went back and went through the notebook, starting at the top, step by step, and followed the instructions to re replicate what uh, had been taught. And that worked great. Uh, and then I went back and changed things to use the data that I was interested in, not the area that was uh, used in the example. And that also worked great. So it really is a very nice way to teach yourself and remind yourself after you've uh, used it. So you should see on your screen now the syllabus, which is available to you through the chat. Um, we also have a Slack channel, uh, which I think almost all of you, if not all of you are connected to somewhere in there. If you know how to use it there, I think there are all the links that are pinned appropriately. I don't know how to find them, but uh, maybe it can show us uh, when we get to that section. So what I'm going to do now is just sort of walk through the structure of the class. I took a lot of time on uh, Friday, uh, but I'm not sure all that time is necessary. So maybe I'll try to go a little bit quicker. Uh, as you can see, the kickoff meeting walkthrough uh, recording is available on YouTube already. Somebody added that in here. So that's good. So that was from last Friday. Uh, that, that's correct, right? Who put that in there? Is that you, Becca? Or France? Uh, that wasn't me. That might have been Melissa. Ah, Melissa put it in. Okay, excellent. So that's already available. Uh, it's the same content as you're going to hear today, just different people were on and the words will be slightly different. Uh, and here you can see links to this document. Uh, you can see the link to a, a homework spreadsheet that will be the place where you deposit your homeworks. Uh, as you do them and they will be graded uh, at that location. We'll, we'll go over that when, when, when we get to it. Also, so you'll know we're using this tool called OpenSAR Lab, which is a cloud-based um, uh, cloud training mechanism that was set up by the Alaska Satellite Facility under Frontsmeyer. And uh, there are, Two ways to get to OpenSAR Lab. One way is the incorrect way. The correct way is to use this one, uh, unavco.asf.alaska.edu. There's another one that you should not pay attention to. Anyway, we'll go over that more in the next hour. So as you know, the course is about INSAR. It's about geophysical modeling using INSAR. And the tools that we're training on are the uh, JPL uh, Caltech developed uh, ICE tool, which does the interferometry part of it, time series analysis tools using uh, ARIA tools, which is uh, basically a set of tools that allows you to pull already processed interferograms 
from an archive and uh, manipulate them in various ways, cropping and stitching and that kind of thing. And then uh, using MintPy to do the time series analysis on those tools or from a, uh, on the output from those tools or from uh, another data source. So that's what we're training in this class. Uh, and we will be illustrating that training with notebooks that actually do uh, the processing through uh, from start to end on specific geophysical problems of interest. So the overview of the workshop is given here. We have one week of pre-course uh, self-directed training. Uh, and some of that stuff we provide resources for, some of it you're kind of on your own for. Uh, in particular for Unix and Python and plotting, uh, these things you, you only need to know at a, a sort of rudimentary level. And there are a lot of resources on the web that allow you to do this. Some of them are listed below. Uh, so you can, uh, you're can you kind of expected to do that on your own, NumPy as well. Uh, the, the notebooks that we're training to though, of course, have everything already prescribed. And the nice thing about the methodology is that you can make a change to something, rerun, that particular um, function and see uh, what the changes are. So you can learn sort of on the fly using this method, this notebook methodology. Um, there's other uh, uh, modules on downloading data, the cloud environment itself, Open SAR Lab, using GDAL, uh, software installation, and SAR theory. These things are all. Uh, have been taught in previous years, and there are videos linked below that you'll see that allow you to um, you know, watch those videos this week and learn from them. And some of them have uh, notebooks associated with them uh, that allow you to follow along. The training this year might be slightly different from previous years, but it should be pretty, pretty straightforward. So that's expected this week, in particular, from a SAR perspective, a synthetic aperture radar theory perspective, because we've shortened the class to be a, a virtual class of only four hours per day, it's important, uh, we, we had to move some of the material out of the class and put it into the pre-class, pre-course period. So one of those things that was a casualty was the SAR theory part. So this is where we talk about, you know, generally how SAR images are formed, what the characteristics of those are in terms of speckle and layover and shadow uh, resolution and things like that. If those terms are unfamiliar to you and you've never worked with SAR imagery before, it's really important that you uh, at least go through the notebook and watch the video in advance. So it, I can't stress that enough because we're going to jump in next week and talking about INSAR using all the terminology and, uh, and uh, nomenclature that uh, we assume familiarity with. So please do at least, if you don't do anything else, do that. Uh, and we will be collecting the homeworks that are associated with those modules and sort of checking off that you've looked at them. So I really appreciate it if you do it. It'll, it's for your own benefit to, to do that. So that's the pre-course and that's all this week. Uh, we're going to supplement and you should have received invitations for, for um, office hours that will allow you to uh, ask us questions about any of these things as you're going along. Uh, one thing I should say, the math here, uh, there is a math module. There's actually a notebook on this uh, that doesn't have a video associated with it, but it's basically just list the math fundamentals that you would benefit from knowing for this class. Things like complex numbers and vectors and uh, linear algebra, all very rudimentary. Uh, but very uh, useful for being able to follow along uh, the, the theory section so that you really understand what's going on. So also, I encourage you to look at that. Last year, that was the one module that almost everybody looked at just so they could feel some comfort that they had the right background. All right, so then the next uh, five days here, day one through five, those are the actual course itself, and that starts next week on Monday. 
And we'll go over those in more detail below. So I'm not gonna review that right now. Here's a little more detail on the, yeah, question. There's a question comment. though, what, what, is, what are the differences between comfort levels one through four? Is four good or bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. I think uh, four is good and one is bad. If you're not comfortable, it'd be a low number, but I guess I, I, it could be either way. We could, let's just say that four is good. <laughs> okay. All right, how about that? Hopefully that's the same as we did last year. All right, uh, so uh, as I mentioned, the math module is self-directed. There's a notebook that you'll find when you log into OSL. The uh, OSL is shorthand for Open Star Lab. I'll, we'll use that a lot in this class. When you get on to the account, you'll see all of the notebooks that we have in the training. They are labeled um, uh, appropriately and you'll find that in there. Um, and for each one of these modules, we have sort of the expected outcome and the, the assessment method. There are problem sets. Uh, sort of quizzes throughout this thing that you can take, self-assessed quizzes. And I think there is one problem set at the end, uh, just to give, give yourself uh, a, a little test. Uh, for the Python, Unix, plotting NumPy, as I mentioned, this is all self-directed. You can go to the UNAVCO page and find tutorials from the GMT SAR training, where they actually put more time into this. There's also a website here that you can go to that has all kinds of basics of these things that you can look at if you're uncomfortable. But basically what we hope is that you can follow along with the Jupyter notebooks that we are using, understand how to modify the scripts, not necessarily be an expert at this stuff, just so that you have some familiarity with what it is you're looking at on the page. Uh, and the assessment is, uh, we'll, we'll find out sort of generally how well you're doing with uh, understanding the homeworks as we go along. Um, then for OSL, there is a video from last year. There's going to be a video from the hour following this one. Uh, so you can either use last year's or this year's. This year's will be slightly different. Uh, because the interface has changed a tiny bit, but uh, either one will be appropriate. And yeah, for the uh, mechanics of using the Open Star Lab and how to use notebooks, last year's is perfectly fine. Uh, we will replace uh, last year's after today's recording uh, is completed. Uh, oh, excellent, doing. that's a good idea. Yeah, that would be less confusing. Okay, for the GDAL training, uh, there is a video from last year. There is a little hiccup with this in that I don't think the data set that we have associated with the notebook has yet been located. Uh, has anybody found that? Gareth or Fronts or anybody? I have a dim recollection that they are attached to the documents, um, ICE2 docs, I think, but we can probably find them. Yeah, we probably should find them <laughs> uh, because I think it's hard to run through the notebook without the uh, data sets. Agreed. I looked in ICE2 docs and I couldn't actually see them, but that doesn't mean they're not there. I've, I have a feeling I've run through some of these on my own computer, like after the, because I, I used them to like try and remember how to use GTEL. <laughs> um, so I'll have a look on my machine and see if I can find them. That would be great. And then Becca, I think, can make sure they're in the right place and everything. I, I like to volunteer Becca for things. So that will be available, hopefully, in the next uh, 
day or so. Um, and then the installation of ice uh, using Conda and, con and including containers, this is for your benefit after the class. We don't really need this for the class. We encourage you strongly to run using OSL rather than uh, installing it yourself. And uh, to be quite frank, we don't have that training available yet. It's going to be developed over the next couple of weeks. But sometime around the end of the course, we'll provide instructions for you to uh, be able to create the same environment on your local computer. Yes, so we will be uh, giving you a Docker container that uh, replicates basically what you're seeing in the OpenSAR lab with all of the dependent uh, software packages, uh, including ICE, MinPy, and everything uh, in, you know, included. Uh, and we'll give you some instructions on how to set up a uh, Docker container on your local machine if you wanted to uh, replicate the environment uh, locally. Sounds great. So Sara is a data download tool that now uh, is working. Um, module on raster tiling and map projections. We have videos for that. And here we get to the SAR theory. This is um, not optional in the sense that it, it is what I was talking about earlier, uh, understanding at least a little bit about the phenomenology and the terms used in SAR imaging and the general principles is kind of important. So I strongly encourage you to watch this video if you don't have familiarity with it and go through the notebook that's associated with it called SAR.IPYNB, I believe. And you'll see that in the OSL set of notebooks. There's another uh, notebook for those of you who are interested in the details of how SAR images are formed. Uh, this one here called SAR Imaging Theory is optional. We don't, there's no need for you to do it. It's actually quite involved and it takes quite a bit of time to run through it because it's actually doing uh, image information on synthetic point target data. So, and it runs through several different algorithms and can take up to an hour on these machines to run. So it's fully optional. It's for your own edification. If you do it, um, it would be great. And it'd be nice to get your feedback uh, and maybe we can consider it as extra credit or something like that if you want to do it. I mean, really all you have to do is open it up and click run all cells and it will just run for you. But uh, really to get some benefit out of it, you can look at each of the different steps, look at all the plots that uh, outline all the intermediate steps and try to understand it. Okay, so that's that. Um, that's the pre-course stuff. Uh, for the training itself, uh, all the times here in the, in the syllabus are Pacific times. So for your time zone, please uh, do the translation accordingly. We start at 10 every day. We do have office hours prior to that, but uh, we'll go over that in a second. We have a Zoom link for each one. And you can see the first day we're covering geophysical modeling, the INSAR theory, SAR theory you will have studied on your own. And then we go jump right into strip map data processing using the strip map app that uh, we have developed for uh, a, a variety of sensor types. Uh, mostly the strip map sensor types. And again, there's a video from previous years that you can look at in advance if you are so inclined. There are homeworks associated with these things. Uh, and we'll talk about the details of those homeworks as the day arises. Uh, on Tuesday then, uh, Gareth leads us through interpreting an interferogram. So the previous day you would have generated interferograms then interpreting them is uh, the next step. And uh, Gareth will lead us through that. It's kind of a fun exercise. I think it's, are you expecting people to print stuff out on paper or is it don't online have to. these days? You don't have to print okay. it. Um, it works better if you do, but um, people's access to printing is, is very variable. So there is an online um, uh, solution if, if you don't have access to color printers and stuff. Good. Okay, after that, then we uh, introduce uh, processing 
Sentinel-1 data using a TOPS uh, processor. It's similar in many ways to the strip map app on the previous day, but it's specific to Sentinel-1, which has a different mode of imaging, and there's a lot of subtleties associated with that. So uh, there's actually videos from previous years chopped into three parts that you can access here, um, but otherwise this will be taught again by Haresh, who largely developed that app. On Wednesday, um, Brent Minshew will be teaching the first of his two modules. The first is basically uh, learning about uh, interferograms of ice sheets or glaciers that are moving quite quickly, what the characteristics of those are, how you get velocity out of it, and that kind of thing. Uh, not so much about modeling, but uh, maybe a little bit. And then uh, Gareth will talk about preparing data for modeling. Um, and then after that, we will talk about two of the largest error sources for interferometry. One is the tropospheric noise and the other is ionospheric noise and some of the mitigation techniques that we have for doing so. Again, there's modules from previous years, uh, videos from previous years that you can look at. And then on Thursday, uh, we start in on time series. Uh, David Beckert will teach time series, uh, sort of the basics, the theory part of it. And then we'll talk about the ARIA tools that are used for uh, downloading already processed interferograms that may be in a uh, stack uh, orientation so that you can look at those, prepare them for time series analysis. In the afternoon, then uh, Brent will give his second module on uh, looking at stacks again, but this time offset stacks for measuring velocity dynamics when velocities are large. And uh, ARIA tools, cropping and stitching, uh, there's a video from the previous years. We ran out of time since we added two new modules on, on glaciers. So this is sort of a homework for you to go through the module that we have on ARIA tools to practice stitching and cropping. And this is the one I was talking about uh, that I did on my own and it worked out well. So I think it will work out well for you. And then on Friday, we covered mint pie. Um, so first an introduction, Yun Jun Zhang will give the introduction and talk about the time series analysis uh, characteristics using MintPy uh, on various sets of data. And then uh, there are other ways of preparing stacks of data than using ARIA tools. And uh, that will be the final module on the last day. So before um, we talk about other resources and logistics, I want to remind you, so I don't think Hillary is on today, that um, we, uh, an important part of this class from our funders, sponsors perspective is assessment. They wanna make sure that what we're developing and what we train is effective. And last year we instituted a pre-assessment survey and a post-assessment survey. The pre-survey you can get to at the link that's at the top of the syllabus here. And we strongly, strongly urge everyone to take that even though you haven't taken the training yet, it gives us an idea of what you know and what you don't know. And guessing is okay, uh, sir. Most of the questions are oriented, so you don't really have to calculate anything. You just have to figure out uh, to some extent, you know, what the best answer is. Uh, and that will help us then to assess once you take the post-class survey afterwards, uh, how much, how effective the training was. And in fact, last year we found, uh, you know, statistically significant improvement on most questions from before to after, which is a good thing. There were a few, however, that uh, some people kind of uh, regressed, which meant that the training was not so effective. And we tried to address that in updates to the material this year. So we're very interested to see whether that those updates were effective. And it's uh, really important for you to take these surveys so that we can get that assessment. Okay, 
So I'm assuming that questions are being asked in the chat. I'm not looking at the chat, uh, if there are any. Uh, in terms of tools, we have the Slack channel that I think everybody uh, has access to. So Becca, is there a place where these links are pinned in there that I couldn't find? Yeah, the link to the syllabus, the homework drive, and the assignment sheet are pinned in the general chat on the Slack. General. So I click on general. Oh, it says two pinned at the top. Okay. I click on that. Okay. I see that. Excellent. Is there a way to pin them elsewhere? <laughs> I, I, I just when you click on the U, you have to be in, I guess, some channel, huh? Yeah. I mean, we could do a separate channel that says like important links. So, so I guess. If yeah, maybe that's the best thing because I it's just not as so obvious the, the tiny little two pinned at the top that people know. Yeah, important links would be great. All right, and then OSL you're going to be trained on in the next hour. Um, and that we've already gone over the group Google Drive. So I think those are the most important resources. The syllabus itself has all the video links if you want to get a head start uh, and watch those rather than just go to the notebooks. And the locations of the notebooks and everything will become apparent after you do the Open SAR Lab training. So uh, we don't need to necessarily go over that right now. So last time we spent the rest of the hour going over Open SAR Lab, but I don't know that uh, we need to do that this time. Uh, and we probably shouldn't start it before the top of the hour when I assume other people will join. So I think the rest of this time we can either answer questions or we can uh, finish early and then return at uh, 20 minutes from now for the Open SAR Lab training. Are there other questions? While well, you're trying to type in questions, um, so for the Open SAR Lab training, and Rebecca, correct me if that's wrong, but I think it's the same link, the same uh, Zoom meeting. So if you want, you can just uh, stay online, mute yourself, walk away, get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, uh, and then we'll come back for the Open SAR Lab training in 19 minutes. Yep, it's the same link. So I see a question from Lu Yen about the math basics. Gareth kind of answered it, but yeah, the the many of the notebooks have a your understanding section in them, which is uh, which is something that uh, you can you know click on every. <laughs> it's a multiple choice question, and you can click on every one to find the right answer. Uh, so you, it, you, it's self-assessment and you can cheat if you want, but uh, the idea is that you're trying to learn. So we're encouraging you to read the question, look at the answers, uh, select the best answer that you think, click on it and see if you got it right or not. Uh, and I think you're right. There is no homework at the end for math basics, but in terms of the math, we're kind of expecting uh, everybody to have this already. This is just a way for them to uh, make sure that they have the level of comfort needed. I think we, when we advertised the class, we kind of said what people, what kind of background people should have. So yeah, I don't think the homework would be to print out, I think we asked people to print out their work with the answers typed in. And of course you can, you can change the answer until it's right, uh, just so that we know that you went through it. Okay, so the usual question, Franz, can we use Open SAR Lab after the short course? Um, I think the answer is for some time, yes. Uh, and then if you want extended access, you'll probably get kicked back to this, the standard open SAR lab that the community uses, which I think yeah. is a different set of genes. Yeah, so there's, there's this, uh, we are using uh, open SAR lab as a separate deployment um, in this unavco.asf.alaska.edu uh, URL. Um, 
And at the end of life for this particular deployment, there are different options uh, I can talk about. One of them is the Docker option that you install it locally. And then if you have a, a pressing need, we can also um, um, you know, talk about allowing you in the um, formal um, data center, open SAR lab, um, sort of a more permanent deployment that is not tied to a, to a course. Um, so these are all options we can discuss in the next uh, two or three weeks. And, uh, and you can ask us via email uh, as sort of the time of the end of life of this deployment comes, comes around. So we'll leave the deployment up for a week after the end of the course. Uh, so you can download work that you did on the OpenSAR lab if you wanted to, um, but we can talk about this in the next hour. Okay, yeah, and uh, we have office hours this week uh, at 3 p.m. Pacific tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific on Thursday, and 11 a.m. Pacific on Friday. So we're, you know, this is informal, uh, mostly teach yourself or uh, self, uh, self training. So this is for questions. I realize the times are perhaps not so convenient for people in other countries, particularly Asia. Uh, but, um, you know, you can always use the Slack channel and you can, uh, to send us questions and we can respond through that. And we can consider if there's a lot of questions, uh, we can consider adding earlier office hours. During the, um, the week, of the class, we have office hours scheduled in the afternoons and early morning so that everybody should have an opportunity to attend office hours and ask questions. All right, well, if there are no further questions, then uh, I think we can take a 15 minute break and come back at the top of the hour for the OpenSAR Lab training.